Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.4 beta 2. iOS 17.4 beta 2 is out to developers and hopefully soon to public beta testers, typically by the time you're watching this video or possibly tomorrow, depending on when Apple decides to release it. Now this update came in at 970.3 megabytes for me on my 15 pro max. However, some people on beta one re-release were actually seeing it as big as seven gigabytes and have to fully reinstall the OS. I'm not sure why, but some some people were seeing that I haven't seen that on any of my devices. Now this released alongside the very first version of vision OS 1.1 beta one. So if you're curious about seeing that, let me know in the comments below, but it's out for Apple vision pro. Now, if you're a developer now, also Apple released iPad OS 17.4 beta two watch OS 10.4 beta two, along with all the other updates with Mac OS TV OS and others. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about the build number is two one E five one nine five E this particular build does bring new features and does have a new modem update. So hopefully that will help with connectivity. If you were having issues on beta one or beta one re-release, we'll have to see in a few days and we'll talk about that in the follow-up as well. Now, iOS 17.4 brings a bunch of new features such as emoji, side loading, transcriptions to podcasts, Siri updates, and more. But the first new update in beta two has to do with widgets. If we go into widgets, we have a new digital clock called city digital. So this includes not only the clock, but also it looks like the temperature as well as maybe the region. And you'll see here we have city one, two, and three city three looks very familiar, but they've changed it around just a little bit. So maybe they'll make some additional changes to this before it releases to the public, but it is a new widget that we have here. So if we add that, you can use it if you'd like to or not. I don't typically use a lot of widgets other than weather here. Now, if we go into the books app, this is a very small update, but brings consistency across iOS. You'll see how it says home here before it didn't say that. And you can see on previous versions, if we go over to books, it actually said read now, I think read now is more appropriate, but they're bringing home to all of the apps such as music, where we also have a new splash screen. We'll talk about that in a moment, but we have home here and they did that in podcasts as well. So they're just bringing more consistency across the OS. If we go under settings and then we go down to privacy and security, then scroll down all the way to where it says analytics and improvements. We have a new one here for improve wallet connections. So that's a small one, but it says help Apple improve the linked account experience by sharing anonymously your account information to Apple. I typically leave these off, but it's there if you want to turn it on. Another small update is under the about section. If we go to general and then about down at the bottom of about with beta one and beta one re-release, we have identifiable region. It shows the actual region based on GPS. So if you're trying to trick it and maybe try and use side loading in the EU, you can't do that. It's based off GPS location information, it seems, but they've removed that in beta two where it doesn't show that information and they may leave it out. We're not really sure, but either way, it looks like it was a mistake before. Now, if you're using AirPods and maybe you've connected them to a different device that's not an Apple device you typically use, maybe a Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, or maybe a Windows computer or something else. If they're connected to that, just like when you switch between devices, Apple will now show you that it's in use by another device. Then you can connect it directly to the device you're currently using. So it's just something new that was in beta one re-release or beta one in general. So I saw that I tried it on iOS 17.3 and it wouldn't show up. Let me know if you're seeing that as well. Also, one other thing some people are seeing is in my telegram channel. If we go in there, it seems some people are actually seeing the battery indicator change. I tried this by turning off the percentage. I don't see a difference, but some people are actually seeing it as a circle. Let me know if you're seeing that. And maybe if you have the percentage turned off, if it shows up this way for you, but I haven't been able to reproduce that. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention is a bunch of splash screens. I already showed you the one in music and I took some screenshots in the other apps that have it as well. And here's the one from music where it says, welcome to Apple music. The other one is in the app store. The first time you open that up and the other one has to do with what's new in Apple TV, where it says watch now is now home. iTunes movies and TV are here and add from previews. So again, everything is just becoming home in all the apps across all the different things here. It says home instead of watch now or listen. Now it's just adding more consistency.
So those are all the changes so far, but there's also one thing that Apple updated today with a support document. And if you use a security key to log into your iCloud account or Gmail or something else, maybe you're using Google security keys or any of the other Yubi keys, it actually will now work with windows. So this is something that wouldn't work before you have to have iOS 16.3 or later, Mac OS Ventura 13.2 and at least two FIDO security keys. So they have to be certified and then you can use it with windows. So they actually launched this website today. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. But if you're using windows and you want to log into iCloud.com, you can now use your security keys to do that for two factor authentication. Now, as far as bug fixes, they finally did it. They actually fixed the notification bug. So you'll see here as I swipe back and forth, it no longer just jumps in. It sort of has a different animation and it's not jumping around. It took since iOS 16 to fix this. Hopefully they saw this video and saw it sort of repeated over and over by many people. And it looks like they finally fixed the notification bug. I cannot get it to come back. I tried deleting all my notifications, had new ones come in and again, it doesn't show up. So this is great news. It's not showing at all. And they finally fixed one thing. Also emoji stickers are working again. If we go into messages and you'll see, here's all the new emoji, but if we go in here and then maybe we go to stickers, they're actually showing again where they weren't showing before. So if you're using emoji stickers or something else, it's taking a second to load here, but you'll see that they actually work. So before they didn't work at all, they wouldn't even show up. This was just blank. Now it's fixed in this update. Now, as far as the release notes, they keep updating this, which is great. We'll go into the feedback app. And so far they haven't actually updated it in feedback, but they do have it on the public facing website. And as far as the documentation or release notes, if we scroll down, there's some known issues. This one was there before where a default browser choice screen might not show up when intended and apps requiring certain managed entitlements might not install or show an error. They've resolved some issues with the app store. There's known issues with browser, browser engine kit, home kit maps. There's still known issues all over, but there's also resolved issues as well. So Apple continues to work on this and it's great to see them update these notes. Hopefully they'll add more and more detail as time goes on. And once it's released to the public, hopefully we'll see many more notes as far as what they fixed with bug fixes. Now, as far as the overall performance, well, we'll take a look at benchmarks in a moment, but so far I've been pretty impressed. Things are nice and fast things open as you would expect. And I have it loaded on the iPhone 11 as well with beta two and things seem to be pretty quick. So if we go into music, that's the first time opening it. It was nice and fast. Again, we'll go back home. It loads from the internet. If we go over and maybe just scroll in the app library, promotion is great on devices that have it. Things are super smooth and I think it's quite good overall. It seems to be nice and fast. And as far as the heat on the back of the device, it's actually stayed nice and cool. After installing beta two, it wasn't warm at all. Beta one was quite warm. The re-release wasn't. It's still going to process quite a bit of information in the background, but in general, it's nice and cool. I'm not worried about it too much as Apple manages it, but I just wanted to let you know that it's staying nice and cool. We'll take a look with the thermal cameras, maybe in the follow-up on the weekend. As far as the overall battery life, well, let's take a look at the battery cycles. I think I just hit hundred on my main device here. So you'll see, I have 100 battery cycles. And if we go back here, We'll scroll down to battery, battery health and charging. I'm still at 100%. I just charge this every single night, sometimes in my car, but mostly just at night before I go to bed, I put it on a wireless charger, a MagSafe compatible charger. As far as battery life, well, during beta one re-release and beta one, it wasn't really that good for me. You'll see I use 75% of my battery and only had three hours and 28 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 16 minutes of screen idle time. However, some people are saying it's phenomenal battery life. So my home and lock screen is taking up quite a bit, but I'm getting to the end of the day with about 20% left. So typically I'll take it off the charger in the morning. By the time I go to bed around two to three in the morning, sometimes I still have about 20% left. So it's at least getting me through a day, but it's not what it used to be. And that's a big complaint with the iPhone 15 models as well. As far as if you should install iOS 17.4 beta two, if you're already on the betas, definitely install this update. You'll see refinements. The notification bug is finally fixed. However, the wallpaper bug is still there where it sort of dims in the background. So it's very slight now, but it's still there. It desaturates. Hopefully they fix this one next. Thankfully they've fixed the notification bug. As far as anything else, well, there are a couple mentions as far as what's in the code. And that's what I wanted to mention before we talk about the release date and benchmarks within the code. It looks like we're going to have an option. Thanks to Aaron P 613 for finding this one where we could have a compatibility mode for Siri. So you'll see new and iOS 17.4 beta two Siri compatibility mode. 
turn this on if you experience problems with the microphone input in this car. I wasn't able to find this in my CarPlay settings and I wasn't seeing it just yet. So let me know if you've actually seen this pop up yet. I haven't seen it anywhere, but it could be in the code and ready to come up with the new Apple CarPlay once it launches with iOS 17.4, hopefully in new cars. Now, as far as when to expect iOS 17.4 beta three, I would expect it as soon as next Tuesday or Wednesday. It seems like we're on a weekly update schedule at this point. And if Apple needs to get this out before March or early March, we should see a final release maybe as soon as the 26th of February or early March on the 4th or 11th. Typically they release them on a Monday or Tuesday. So I would expect some sort of release at that point. However, we're seeing signs of iOS 17.3.1 at this point. They're being seen in analytics online. So we could see that sometime this week or next week. Typically Apple stopped signing previous versions of iOS 17.2.1 and iOS 17.2. So typically when they do that within a week or two, we usually see some sort of update, but we know they're actually working on that. As far as overall benchmarks, well, I did run it on the iPhone 11 for those using older devices, and I had good scores on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So if we go in, you'll see the 15 Pro Max scored 2,914 for single core, 7,254 for multi-core. If we compare that with the history, it's higher with the multi-core score and a little bit lower for single core, but it seems much better overall and just very smooth in general. Let me know your overall experience in the comments below, and if you found any additional features or things I haven't mentioned yet. I'd love to hear from you there. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.